Welcome back, guys. So, welcome back to another episode. Today we are on episode eight, and today we have Elliot with us once again, guys. We ask that you guys uh, share, um, be able to tag a friend that you think would be interested in this episode. Um, we're happy for all the support, grateful for all the support we've had, um, all the shares, all the likes, all the comments, everything. We really, really appreciate it. Um, today we are talking with your Bond Daddy, Elliot. I like the name. Thank you, brother. Really like the name. Yes, sir. So tell us a little bit about yourself. I mean, the Your Bond Daddy deal is uh, all my social. So uh, I am a local bail bondsman and bounty hunter. And so I've got a downtown Houston office, and that's Godfather's Bail Bonds. Oh, okay. Then I have a downtown Conroe office, which is my uh, For A Better Way and Elliot's Bail Bonds. And so my girls now I'm, at my Houston office I used to always call me Bond Daddy, uh-huh. <laughs> and so it just kind of stuck. And so, this. so when uh, you know I was in a business partnership for about 18 years prior to this here in Conroe, okay. and uh, we used to have about six bail bond offices oh, nice. across like the greater Houston area. And uh, so when I sold out to my business partners in January of last year, I just started sitting down, and I mean, like just in the the 20 plus years that I've been in business for myself. Um, <clears throat> marketing's changed. You know what I'm saying? Definitely. Like, hence the name of my company, right. AAAA Better Way Bell Bonds. So, like, I, I, tr- I literally just in that small time frame came from, you know, phone book ads, you know, mm-hmm. to what we use now, you know, social media, you know, TikTok, YouTube. And I think you know, that's Instagram. the reason why they had AAA because you would be like the first one. Literally. Literally. I mean, like, I mean, just, I mean, I still feel like I'm young, but I'll be 45 yeah. this month. But, uh, you know, it was like a, at all the tricks, A space, A space, A space, you know what I'm saying? Uh, a dash one. I mean, all those different things were all like the things you had to use that were like high tech back in the 90s. And right, you know, right. probably prior to that even, you know, to get your name in the front of the phone book. And so when I uh, broke away from my partnership and started sitting down with my marketing team that developed, um, you know, they were all about this new way of marketing yourself. Right. And I'm like, you know, I'm starting to get the outside of my office painted and getting my, you know, my, my labeling up there and all that stuff. And they're like, you know, let's do this. You know, it's, it's YouTube now, it's TikTok, it's Instagram, it's Facebook. We need to have your handle name on the front of your office. And I'm like, what? Right. You know, like I'm trying, I'm like, you know, not trying to back like I'm that old, you know right, what I'm saying? Right. But I'm like kind of debating it. Right. <clears throat> you know because you've saying? only known that for so long. Yeah, so keep it. yeah, and, and like in the other partnership I was in, uh, you know, one of the partners was my father, and then he had another guy, and I just kind of stayed pigeonholed in my area. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like I ran warrants, uh, I hustled up money, I was kind of the face of the company, but like you know, marketing and you know, taxes and payroll and all that stuff was handled by my other partners. So it was a big, it was a big step out there, a big leap out there for me, you know, developing, you know, your bond daddy and, you know, kind of framing up the two Correct. brick and mortar offices I have. When was that change from, from the other name to your bond daddy? Um, I was with a uh, a discount bail bonds. Okay. A, 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 a discount mm-hmm. bail bonds was the, 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 the home office that we had here in Conroe. So I remember uh, that one. Yeah, yeah. four a discount, and then you know we our big thing when I was with my old partners was um, buying out of the companies. So That's when smart. some yeah, so when somebody was like want to retire or make an exit out of the company, we would come mm-hmm. in and take over their liability. You know, in, in the bail bond industry, we may have you know a million. Like currently, I have twenty two million dollars worth of bonds on the street oh, with geez. just my two offices. So, like, when I, let's say I wanted to make an exit at the end of the year, mm-hmm. you know, I'd have to find somebody to be interested in, in taking over that liability, right, right, right. you know, right. something I've already profited off of, you know what I'm saying, and come in. And so we kind of wager it up, like, hey, you know, since we're accepting this $10 million of the liability, we want X amount of dollars off your, your business, you know what I'm okay. saying, the name, the blue sky, the phone number, any of your digital assets, your building that you have. Mm-hmm. So that's how we acquired for a oh, better way. Okay, 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 so okay. about 15 years ago, the office here in Conroe with the big barbecue pit pistol right, out front right, of it, yeah. right, right next to Fiesta, that's that's currently my new location. But that's kind of how we acquired that. Okay. Oh, so you didn't you didn't start there? That I did wasn't, not start oh, that. Okay, okay, yeah, okay, okay. We didn't start Godfather's Bell Bonds either in downtown Houston. We acquired that. Oh, nice, nice. And so that was kind of part of our business model with mm-hmm. my old business partners is we'd come in and buy these people out that were ready to exit their company, and, and we'd kind of wager, like, hey, we're going to accept this 10 or $20 million worth of liability, and we'd kind of beat them up on the price on the real estate. Correct. So that's Correct. a whole, um, like, business model is acquisition. Right? Acquisition is, like, something that's been 
like that next level of just like instead of just bu- like building your own mm-hmm. like you're already in an industry um and then you go and you 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 acquire another one that's already been uh in the game for a while but you have you come in with leverage right you come in with a lot of leverage and sure you, you end up winning and they end up winning of, of course too yeah but you use you, you you keep <laughs> you keep keep winning while they're just like done at that point but it you have to have a lot of capital for that, don't you? I mean, that was the model that I was using when I was with that partnership. Uh, I think now in, in 2022 and, you know, being out solo, mm-hmm. doing my own thing, um, I like creating. You know what I'm saying? So it's kind of an old paradigm. You know what I'm saying? Right. It was kind of my old man. You know I mean? He's 71, mm-hmm. you know? I think I might still be open to entertaining that idea, but currently what like resonates with me, mm-hmm. you know, and, and, and what I'm doing now as a business owner would be to create, you know, that kind of speaks to me more now. I mean, that's how I grew up was acquiring, you correct, know what I'm saying, correct. and taking over stuff. But I don't know. I'm not really in a position right now where I'm wanting to expand. I'm actually closing another one of my mm-hmm. businesses. Uh, I have a, a pretty big dog training business that we built here in Montgomery County. Oh. Uh, come and train at Canine. So oh, gonna, okay, okay. Yeah. I, took, I took my dog over there. Did you? Yes, yes, over here off of 2054 yeah. back there. Yes, yeah. yes. That's my house up there. That's where oh, we have. Oh, okay, okay, yeah. okay. So come and train at canine was something we developed off the come and take it flag with the uh, cannon nice. you know so kind of a marketing genius i felt like you know come and train it i got him yeah. took the shot yeah. took the cannon off and put a german shepherd on there and that you know being in texas you know the battle right. of gonzalez was a really mm-hmm. big deal and the flag and all that so that's been a real humbling thing for me wow, you know what i'm yes, saying because yes. like we're exiting the business really winning you know what i'm saying i mean the right. company does five six hundred grand a year as far as like it's gross numbers but my wife and i aren't dog trainers you know, I got in that business as like a as a money move. Numbers, correct, yeah, correct, correct. You know, I had somebody that was an old partner that came in with an idea, and he was like, you know, hey, let's let's start a dog training business, and these guys in California are going to train us. They'll teach us the marketing, the sales, the whole deal. We'll go out there for three weeks. You know, we'll, we'll it's kind of like we're purchasing a licensing agreement okay, from them. Okay. Uh, and we ended up going out there and like we did the deal and then after a little bit of time, you know, my business partner and I weren't really working out, so I bought him out and then so he was the dog trainer. There you go. You know okay, what I'm saying? So okay. my wife Suzette and I were like, Okay, so we you know, we staffed it with trainers and we had a back office and a sales team. It was a you know, a yes, ten ten yes. employee business. Yeah it is, yeah. Okay. And so that, that dog you saw yesterday, blue? Yeah. Yeah, that bully that, that he's the one that went and that's why he was so calm. Yeah, he's he's really well he, trained. Well yes, yeah. very well. I mean trained. we that's the whole thing where like my ego and pride is like, Oh, but it's like, you know, our lead trainer it's like a family deal. I mean, these people are our family and like our lead trainer's like, Hey, I'm gonna go into real estate and we've known this for years, mm-hmm. you know, not years for months. And so when he came in, it was like, hey, I'm going to do this in September. We're like, cool. And then, like, the next employee to come in was, like, our lead sales girl in back office. And she's like, hey, I'm going to be putting my two weeks in. And me and my wife were like, hmm. Hmm. You know, we just had to look at, you know, what the universe was kind of putting out in front of us. And, and my wife started scrambling. She's like, oh, I'm going to get on Indeed and start looking for new trainers right, and right, a back right, office right. girl. And I'm like, babe, I'm like, you know, we've been thinking about making an exit on this anyways. So, I mean, we're going to package it up and try to sell the digital assets to one of our other trainers mm-hmm. and, uh, you know, wrap it up. When you say up. digital assets, you mean like the, the social media accounts, the websites, the brand, the, uh, the intellectual Context. property? Yes. Oh, yeah. All that. Yeah. So, I mean, we've got probably, you know, a client list of two or 3,000 people, um, you know, which would be good for refreshers, you know, Correct. if you want to refresh your dog Correct. or boarding over the holidays. Uh, Facebook, Instagram, over like a thousand you know followers mm-hmm. on each. Um, and then the name means something. I mean, because, I feel like it because yeah, right. because yeah. Yeah. I mean, people have asked me like, man, because they they knew Blue before, mm-hmm. and Blue was never uh, a bad dog or an aggressive dog, but he just would he, he would he would pull right if yeah. he was interested, he would pull. So a lot of people that would come over or, or just see him in general here because I'll bring him here sometimes. They see the difference or they see the videos that we post on whatever, and they're like wow, where do you go? And then, you know, we tell them, and yeah. like, okay. And so that starts to build something because now I've told, you know, five, 10 people mm-hmm. out of those 10, maybe one will go yeah. and then they'll tell. So, so that name means something. So yeah. when you sell it, you sell the whole, yeah. the whole package. Dang. What do you think? It's a question about your exit. Um, what do you think about entrepreneurs going into something just for the numbers? Do you think uh, it's short term, long term, or do you think it's, it doesn't, how do you feel about that? 
Hmm. Something that's not your passion, right? That you're like, yeah. oh, I'm going in. Should you go in already looking at an exit plan? Yeah, I mean, for me, it was, um, you know, with my wife and I being partners in it, it kind of opened up a lot of stuff for it, and I'm super grateful for it. I don't know if I necessarily have, like, a business feedback on there, but, like, what it did for us is it revealed a lot in our relationship, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Like, as, 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 like, communication, as what direction we wanted to take the business. Uh, there was a lot that was revealed that is kind of, uh, like, I don't feel like, you know, because, like, my ego and stuff wants to be like, oh, bro, you lost and you Correct. failed, Correct. and, like, Correct. you know, I want to beat myself up because, like, this... You know, we're going to close these doors on this company. But, like, if I pause and look back, I mean, there was just a lot of beautiful stuff that came out of it. That's just going to, because I feel like as this door closes, you know, something bigger is going to open for us. I mean, you learned a lot. You I took mean, a lot of notes. You learned different, for different sure. aspects, different things. Correct. And, and I understand that a lot because I don't smoke or vape or anything. Yeah. You know, so a lot of people that knew me would say the same thing. Like, why are you in the smoke shop industry? You don't know anything about that. I would like, well, the goal was, like I said earlier, is just cannabis might be coming in to sure. Texas. And then that's part of it. So that was my idea was going there for the numbers. Mm -hmm. Right. And like you said, especially with this one here, once you build something with your wife, it, it changes everything. You start really noticing different communications that you might have not noticed for sure if you didn't do business together yeah correct, correct. And, and it kind of opened up our eyes too i mean for like our next business move kind of what we want to do and you know that's like with my wife she's like you know i mean i'm, I'm not a dog trainer because she was running the dog business because when i exited my other uh, business uh with my bail bond company before two years ago um she was like she fully stepped into the dog business and she she was making it work and working with business coaches and um, you know, just learning, you know what I'm saying? Like learning about employees and, you know, management styles and, you know, is it CRMs, computer? CRMs, computer? Yep. yeah. 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 The email list where you manage all that stuff. Yeah, you know? going through that and <clears throat> interviewing companies and like learning how these systems work and how data's entered and, um, you know, how to market things and Google clicks. And I mean, there's just like so many different layers mm -hmm. to businesses nowadays and yeah. building a social media and how much to post on social media, when to post, right. and how much content to put out, to put videos or pictures. And, you know, I mean, um, yeah, I think whenever you're at that level in terms of um, like managing the, the business, like it, it all becomes the same in terms of this business is ma not managed the same way at the lower level in terms of like managing the dog trainers is completely different, right? <laughs> But um, like the accounting, the marketing, uh, the leadership, the business skills, all that stuff, like you forget about the uh, about the product because you're so focused on the yeah on the, the higher, back end. yeah the back end yeah. and uh, well I guess at, at some point like the the product or the, what you're selling you don't have to have a passion for it because you're not gonna be dealing with it at the business level yeah you're gonna have you're gonna be dealing with the business things sure correct correct. Yeah, I feel like, um, <clears throat> I mean, yeah, I mean, I, I think it, yeah, what, what, I, what my, my, and it changes too, right? Like my business idea, you know, five years ago was like multiple streams of revenue. You know what I'm saying? I was like, oh, I want to be in amnio and stem cells and ammo commodities, you know, shipping containers of ammo and dogs and bail and bounty. And I was, I was casting my net too wide. And, you know, I was, I was doing some, I, I do some plant medicine work within the psychedelic realm. You okay. know what I'm saying? I was sitting with a shaman uh, of mine up in uh, Indiana. And like we were DLT? talking. Huh? Like DMT? Uh, I mean, anything from ayahuasca mm. to psilocybin mm. to DMT, bufo, yeah, chonga, such, whatever. Such an interesting yeah. topic yeah. right now. Sure, sure. Yeah. And so, like, when I was sitting with them, like, I was I was kind of a little boastfully. You know what I'm saying? I was like, oh, I got this net cast out here, and I'm doing all these things. And he was kind of like, you know, just listening. And he was like, you know, I mean, like, what are you trying to do? I mean, oh, what's your number? He's like, you know, you seem like you're spread real thin. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like, you... You know, you're putting like 10 percent of your energy in all these 10 of these things and so it was kind of a walk away for me you know during integration afterwards to kind of look at that and like talk with my wife about it and my wife's super business minded and she was like yeah she's like i feel like you know within bail you know this is where kind of your bond daddy started to come in she's like you, know, you got your bail bonds and in order to be a bounty hunter in the state of texas you have to be a private investigator so I've got Texas Bounty Investigations, and then, you know, I've got my YouTube channel now, and so, like, I've just tried to keep my, my, my expertise or my energy focused in my, my wheelhouse right mm -hmm. now, and so that's where I've been kind of seeing, like, some stuff start to kind of, you know, 5X, 10X, and, you know, like, we're, we're in talks with Discovery Channel right now, oh, on our oh. TV show, nice. and, like, stuff's really growing. 
Well, that's yeah. awesome. Yeah, that's what I um, tell this guy that that uh, don't cast your net too wide because mm -hmm. you're only spreading yourself too thin, and then you can't focus 100% on everything. Yeah. But you have to go through through what you did Correct. in order for you to go where you're going, right? You have to spread yourself and like understand all these different areas of life, business, and then you narrow yourself in, mm -hmm. and then you, and then you use everything that you've learned to hyper focus not hyper focus but focus on what you're on, on your journey whether it's bond bonds whether it's um the smoke shop and for my for for me it's branding right just mm -hmm. focus on that and 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 narrow in and then go in deeper in inward other than you know outward because mm -hmm. that's where that's where you understand more is going inward towards yourself and towards um what you are who you are really mm -hmm. you know it's all a reflection of who you are right like you get to find out more and more about who you are the more you dig into all this all these things that are focused yeah but i feel like that's what got you to where you're at now right so yeah. you took everything that you've learned and they're able to say okay this is what i liked and it was good numbers this was good numbers these were okay numbers but this is what i'm really liking even better now mm -hmm. right and i i feel when i when i respond to him when he tells me that it's almost the same thing right because my thing right now is multiple streams of income, mm -hmm. right? So I'm thinking like a little bit here, a little bit here, a little bit here, what equal a lot. So I guess I might have to go through that phase, right? Where I'll yeah. have different things. And I'm like, you know what? I remember that one show that I had five years ago, 10 years ago. I need to focus more on one. And to me, it's priorities, right? Like this is first priority. Then I have this store right here, second priority. And then I have my ATM stuff and then like other stuff that I'm working on, right? Which is not big, big numbers yet, but. I still want to get there, mm -hmm. um, but but I think that's a good idea. But I, for now, if I try to focus just on smoke shop, I feel like my mind's still gonna be like, "What about this? Mm -hmm. What about this? There's there's money over here. There's this over there." Yeah. So, so I think for the percentages, like where you're probably a little ahead of me. You know what I'm saying? You're like, "Oh, I'm gonna put like fifty percent in here, and mm -hmm. like twenty here, and ten here, and mm -hmm. five. Correct. Because then you can scratch that entrepreneurial itch. You know what I'm Correct. saying? Where where you know. Um, and you may have experienced this where I'm like, oh, like I'm kind of just doing these little pieces of the pie and I'm just right. like, you know, pissing down my leg because I'm not doing shit. You know what I'm right, saying? Right. I mean, literally, you know, I was just yeah. like, what the hell, man? Like, I'm just not going nowhere and I've got all these great ideas. And I'm like, oh, this is going to make a bunch of money and then, 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 but I wasn't putting enough time into any of them. Okay. And it wasn't, I mean, like I was still living and making money, but right, like right. I wasn't, I think up to my full potential. And I just feel like once you kind of get in there, I mean, there's just so many little... I mean, like, if you were talking about smoke shop, I mean, like, you're in there, or for me at least, I can only speak to that where I'm at, but I mean, like, there's just different levels. I mean, attorney business, I mean, just different little legs right, that kind of pop can, off that I can right, keep right, just right. digging mm -hmm. deeper into my, my wheelhouse, so. Yeah, so, uh, so right now, you're only focused on your bond daddy, or you have other... Uh, so my two, endeavors. my yeah, my two, my two bond offices. I mean, so I mean, I've got a, I mean, a full five thousand square foot downtown Houston office. I mean, like in downtown Houston. Um, that's my godfather's bail bonds. The Connor office up here, and then you know, I'll I'll get hired by people from out of state. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? For just because of my networking, I'm done within the industry. You know, because bail's been kind of under fire for the last four or five years. There's been a bunch of reform in the bail bond industry and in, uh, in the jail industry and all that stuff just because I think that you know some of these little special interest groups got in here and all of a sudden like the victim became the person incarcerated right right it was that's a, what happens it was a weird deal you know what I'm saying like yeah. because you know if if you know my, my mom got knocked down and her purse got took and she like, broke her arm and you know some dude burned off with her car <clears throat> I mean my mom's the victim you know right, what I'm saying I mean like my mom was just minor business going into, you know, Macy's and got jacked, you right, know what I'm saying? Right. Well, now all of a sudden, you know, Bob Smith that, you know, beat my mom up and took her purse and burned off in her car. He's, no, he's the, the victim. victim. Right. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Right. And I'm just like, oh, my God. You know, like I've been, you know, having to fight. You know, and I agree. Everything needs a little shining up and a little mm. reform. And there's like this little small percentage of people that are wrong. Correct. Right. 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 I, right. I get it. But that's not the But the overall. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I mean, like, you know, and so I've been fighting bail across the United States. Um never thinking that I would come to Texas. You know what I'm saying? I was like, oh, it's like a super left wing, like California deal right, and like right. New Jersey and like it's never coming to Texas and start kind of easing across the, you know, the country. And right. I was like, oh, well, it's definitely not going to come to Montgomery County. Right, and it was just like, boom, and, you know, it hit in Texas and it hit, of course, in the, you know, bigger urban areas, you know, mm -hmm. the Dallas and the Austin yeah. and the, you know, El Paso. And then all of a sudden I was like, eh, 
and then it was all of a sudden boom into those smaller counties. This Conroe grew so much. It really did. The it really has. Of people that came in. I mean, different mindsets as well. And I mean, very they, much so. Yeah. Yeah. So. I don't know, and I think it had to kind of run its course, like anything, right. you know, right. so they started releasing a bunch of people on their own recognizance, you know what I'm saying, because that was the thing to do, that was like the movement, was like these people need to be released on their own recognizance on these PR bonds or pre-trial, right. and uh, that's kind of run its course, and they've seen how that's worked, you right. know what I'm saying, right. and it seems like things are starting to kind of come back come towards back commercial right. veil, okay. you know, whether you're Democrat or Republican, conservative, liberal, whatever, I mean, like, I'm cool, I mean, you know, I mean, I made it through it, right. you know what I'm saying, right. and... Uh, you know, we're just figuring out what works best for the criminal justice system. Right. And I think that, that might have been it, just a trial and error. I mean, yeah. You know, they tried it and they started seeing maybe, you know, a certain percentage continue to do, you know, other crimes or other things. And yeah. they're like, hey, this, this isn't this isn't working. So I'm not too familiar with, like, the, the whole industry. Sure. What, what does that mean? What does recognizance mean? What does that mean? So, like, the way a bail bondsman works. Um, he tried to explain it to me yesterday. Sure. I was like, sure, yeah, that's, well, that's that, what that means. It's a but great thing to ask. Well, there, there's one next door, right here, two doors down. Is it online bail bonds? The Moharabs are over here? Uh, yeah, uh, yeah, Moharabs. Yeah, okay. I so, can't. I mean, me by nature, I ask a million questions. So that's why I, I kind of had an idea and I tried to tell yeah. him. I mean, so there's a couple ways to do a bail. So you could, uh, let's say um, Ray had a $5,000 bond uh, and went to jail for DWI. Ray, right? Ray. Yep. I, I, yep. I'm yep. like, Ray, yep. Ray, yep. Ray, yep. Ray, yep. Ray, yep. Ray. Yep. I keep it saying it over. Uh, went to jail, DWI, $5,000 bond. You could to go and get a cashier's check or a money order from your bank mm -hmm. and go up to the jail and place that. I mean, most people don't have five thousand dollars. I mean, bail could go from five hundred dollars to five hundred thousand, right. just depending on the charge. So a lot of times, people don't have five hundred bucks or five thousand or fifty thousand. So they'll come to a bondsman like me, and I'll I'll underwrite it as far as like an insurer. Like I check them out, and see who they are. I'm like, oh, how long has he lived here? Oh, he's been here eighteen years. You know, he went to high school in Conroe. So you got to scope them out. I do. You know what I'm saying? Because, like I said, I've got $22 million of the right. bonds on the street. You know what I'm saying? So and, like, who, who I have to teach be... my employees that. You know what I'm saying? Like, how who we want to deal with and, you know, what we're wanting to deal with and, like, the risk level. Can I catch him? I'm always writing like that because I'm, I'm a bounty hunter. You know what I'm saying? Right. right. So we're, I'm, I'm writing this as to see how, how I can catch this guy. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Okay, he's been here 17 years. He has a couple of businesses. He's married. they got kids in school in right. Conroe. Like, he's the chances of him leaving are minimum. Yeah. Right. So you're already looking at the end and at the I am, you have to. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, because like I gotta be calculated with that. You know what I'm saying? Like, so who wouldn't be somebody you wouldn't? You wouldn't. Uh, I had a, I had a lady that came in my office yesterday, um, and I was kind of talking to her. She had like two fifteen hundred dollar bonds, like a DWI and some type of whatever, I think some weed or something or pills or something on her. And uh, so she came in and. Um, I was sitting down talking. She had her, her boyfriend of three years, and we started talking a little bit, and I was about to do her bond. It was kind of random. This DPS officer I'd been looking for him mm -hmm. was at my office hanging out, talking about some files, and, you know, he was there talking with a couple of my, my bounty hunters, and in comes this woman, and they're both just like, oh, my God. Like, they've been looking for this woman, you know, on these open warrants, and she's like, oh, my gosh. Like, you know, she's like, thinking she's going to the bond office, and here's this it, DPS right? officer. We got you. Locked in. <laughs> it's a surprise. And so, like, I don't, I'm, I don't, I don't chase bad guys like that. Like, if you're man enough or woman enough to come in my office to right, talk right. to me, like, I'm not going to put the cuffs on you. Right. You right. know what I'm saying? Like, I'm going to try to help you because you That's trusted good. me. You know what I'm saying? Right, right. Not that this was that situation, but like I just don't roll like that. I'm like, right. oh, I got you, and put the cuffs on you when you come in the office. Right, like, right. A lot of people do that. I don't. So anyway, she came in, and uh, I just started briefly interviewing her. She's like, well, you know, I've been here for three years, and she's like, before that, I was in Florida, but I'm from Indiana, but I went to prison in Colorado, and I'm like, uh, red flags are just like zoom, zoom, zoom. I mean, like, right, you know, for right, me, right. that's that's like super risky, you know. And then she's like, you know. And they're just trying to talk real quick, give me a quick rundown. And we sold our travel trailer, and like we're in it, you know. So to me, you can hook up your travel trailer anytime. She gave dip. herself away real quick. Yeah, yeah, you know, I'm sure the DPS officer standing there, she was just like, ah, you know. And so, out. and so she's like, yeah, we're in a like, you know, double wide now, and blah, 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 blah. But I decided a real quick, quick, crisp picture of how these people, you know, she could just get another fifth wheel or bumper pull trailer and they're gone. And they you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, I mean, and like, you know, it, it, and, and it's a little different when you have like a ca travel trailer because then you could just go pop up in these little uh, uh, HOA parks. or, yeah, whatever these little, yeah, whatever mm -hmm. parks. Mm -hmm. It's not like you're renting a house because that's when I'm chasing somebody. Like I'm running 
background checks and skip tracing them. I'm finding their electric and their cable and their mortgage and all this stuff. Well, when you're in a travel trailer, you're just... Yeah. yeah. I seen an episode uh, this week that you were going to... You said something about you're going to hunt him like a dog. I was like, oh, damn. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Like, I was uh, hung up in this mom. On his mom, right? He hung up on his mom, and then he was like... Uh, oh, yeah, that guy. Yeah. Over Montgomery. Yeah. yeah. Mm, I was like, man, that's... I watched the whole episode. It's so interesting. Yeah, they, they, are. Are. they really are. They really Thank are. Thank you, bro. Yeah. They're, they're well yeah. done. Yeah, you know, I, I spent a lot of money. Very, my, very well done. I've got a really good crew of guys that edit the film, and I mean, I feel super lucky. I mean, I, I mean, like, yeah. I haven't... August will be a year that we've been doing this yeah. stuff, and I mean, I'm already... I've you know, got an agent out of New York and, and talks with Discovery ID. That's like, awesome. like, literally, like, like they found me through TikTok. Yeah. They found our YouTube, and they contact me. I signed a contract with but them. But you see all that branding work? All that stuff you're yeah. working on, see? Well, yeah. I still think I need a phone book, though. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so, <laughs> quick question. So, on, on that thing, the reason why you scope them out, right, is because when they bond out, they pay like a ten yeah. percent, yeah. and yeah. then you're you're responsible. True, right? So he's in jail, DWI. He's like, "Hey, call my homie, dude. We do this podcast. He's gonna hook me up. He can get in touch with my wife. I know his number, so we call you, get you on the phone. I kind of briefly talk to you to see who you're about. You know, like I grew up here my whole life. You know, this is my business partner. We do X, Y, and Z. Blah blah blah. I'm like, cool. Come down and talk to me. So it's gonna be ten percent. So five hundred dollars." Plus fifteen dollars over the jail to do his five five thousand dollar bond. Fifteen, that's what it was. I thought it was thirty five yeah, or something. I, yeah, because you always have, they always down. ask for change, right? And you have to give exactly. Yeah, we have fifteen when you yeah. go to the jail. So yeah. you tracking me so far? Are we on the same? Yeah, yeah, yeah. A I little think bit. So. Are yeah, you worried about that bit. audio? Yeah, yeah. I'm worried too much about <laughs> this stuff. Yeah. So anyway, so basically, uh-huh. you'll bring a five thousand dollar bond. I'll put up the five grand. Charge you ten percent, five hundred bucks to get him out. Oh, okay. Okay. So then I babysit him. I'm an adult babysitter. I babysit him until he goes to court, all of his court dates. Oh, mm-hmm. And once he completes court and gets like probation or a fine or a dismissal or something, I'll get my five grand back mm-hmm. and I keep that five hundred. And I'm just right. steady doing that. Correct, correct, correct. Just rolling money. But if I don't show up, if he doesn't show up in the state of Texas, if it's a misdemeanor, I have six months or 180 days to find him. And on a felony, it's 270 days or nine months to find him and get him back in custody or I have to physically write a check for $5,000. It's a lot of liability. Aren't yeah. You? I mean, dude, I got big money on the streets. Man. Right. That's what you, yeah. So, so that's, that's the, the part of it. Right. And the, I think the main thing is just me coming out would be like, Hey, he looked at me and said, Ray is probably going to show up. I know where to find him and he's coming out. So Montgomery County, just know that he's going to show up or we're going to get him, mm-hmm. right? So it's either that or you stay in jail and Montgomery County's like, well, we know he's in jail, so we know he's going to show up to us, right? And well, finish yeah. his cases. So that's commercial bail that I told you about. So the new wave was this pre-trial or PR bonds. And I mean, like, where I agree with the system is, let's say you're, you're 35 years old, you've never been arrested, you've been here, you know, half your life, you got a DWI, your first one ever, never been arrested, then you could qualify for a PR bomb. You know what I'm saying? I mean, like, you're not a risk, you're a business owner, they do like a little interview in there, I mean, like, cool, cut you loose. And what's PR? Personal recognizance. So that was kind of the movement that they went towards, was doing all these PR bonds. And I was kind of like, okay, I mean, I can get down with that, because most of the people I'm dealing with aren't first-time offenders. Right. You know, most of the people I'm dealing with over here, you know, there's... Selling dope, doing dope, beating the wife, stealing from Walmart, driving drunk, crashing. I mean, like it's just from the 18 until they die. Right, you know right, what I'm right. Cause everything. It's reoccurring. Yeah, everything I deal with is drug or alcohol related. You know what I'm saying? Like you're not, you're not slapping the wife sober most right. of the time. Yeah, like well, 98% yeah. of the time you're not, you're not stealing from Walmart sober. sober right, right. You know what I'm saying? You know, you know, I mean, it's just, it's just trickle down effect from alcohol and drugs, everything right. I deal with. Right. And so... So, yeah, so you'd qualify, I think, for a PR bond. You've never mm-hmm. been in trouble. Cool, cut you loose. You know what I'm saying? That's no skin off my back. I mean, you you would be considered my cream. Right. You know what I'm saying? Right. Like, you're the good guy, yeah. business owner. I'm like, cool, it's a One quick 500. Hey, you're going to be a problem. Right. So I don't mind losing that business if I had to. But the pendulum swung so far that it was like, you know, Anybody. Josh Smith from Harris County on his 32nd arrest, been to right. prison six times, missed court eight, you know, because they're looking at his criminal history, PR bond. It's like, like, what, what? what, dude? I mean, like, this dude was, like, evading cops and had a pistol. You know what I'm saying? And he's been to jail. He's been to TDC five times. And he's been arrested 32 times here in Harris County. And they're like, oh, no, he's a PR bond. And so PR bond means that they can do what? They release him. They release him on their own recognizance. And trust them to show up. So there's no me there. 
that's putting mm. up the five grand. Because like if if, if right. I put the five grand up, I'm gonna make sure he's in court. Because if not, I'm about to pay five grand. A PR bond. If they just cut him loose, there's no nobody's responsible for nothing. It's just a he's responsible for his five thousand. Mm-hmm. Well, if you can't find him. There's screwed. nobody, you know what I'm saying? It's yeah. just monopoly money in the county. Okay. So, okay. I mean, like, they're cutting these dudes loose with all these, you know, dozens and, then, and dozens of charges, and they're going back out and recommitting crimes within days or hours. Correct, correct, like, the correct. same shift of cops is seeing that same person back on the streets before their shift's over. Jeez. Yes. Yeah. Banging and stealing and cheating. And so what happened in Harris County where the, the Kim Og, the DA, and the chief of police, Art Acevedo, and all them got a bunch of pie on their face because they were big supporters from George Soros funding them to be in their positions. So they, they ended up getting a bunch of pie on their face because of, there was a bunch of heinous crimes that were committed. A lot of these people got released eight hours later. You know, they had a pistol up against their wife's head, you know, wasted on crack, you know what I'm saying? Like, they're like, oh, a PR bond, release him back out. Well, he just wax his wife yep. 24 hours later on a bender right. again. And he should have been in jail, dude. Yes, right. You know what I'm a, saying? Like, uh, maybe mom or dad wouldn't have come and got him out on that $5,000 bomb because they're like, hey, he needs to sober up. Or, hey, it's his 35th mm-hmm. time to be in jail. Or just his time he whatever, stays whatever, there. whatever, yeah. whatever, whatever. Yeah. Right. That's why jail's there. You know what right. I'm saying? But they're like, oh, no, cut him loose. He's cut the victim. Loose. He's got rights. This, this guy doesn't have money. Poor you know guy, what I'm saying? Yeah, the yeah, poor yeah. guy wouldn't be in this situation if he didn't have money. And it's like... What? Correct. You're not giving him any money, so why are you sending them out? So they're spinning back on the streets, and he's whacking somebody. Meemaw's going in the Walgreens with her purse, and just boom, boom, boom. But she's dead. You know right. what I'm saying? And then you right. got this family that lost their mom because right. Josh Smith should have been in jail because he's addicted to crack and running around with pistols all over Houston. Like, leave. That's what jail's for in prison. Right. 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 That's, that's exactly you know what I'm saying. I mean, like it's yeah. I mean, like, and that. And so what's happened now? is all this stuff's came out and there's like this 150 like heinous stuff that's been committed in Harris County, you know, dad and somebody, you know, dad and little boy leaving the Astros game, gets in an argument with some dude on the road and road oh. rages out that's on a PR bond that shouldn't have been out and he mm-hmm. shoots the little boy in the back seat. I mean, I'm sure you've been here. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? That. These are some people that were on PR bonds Wow. and right. it's cool. Like they could have been out on a PR bond or a surety bond through a bondsman. They could have, right. but maybe somebody wanted to come and got them out because exactly. they're tired of effing with them. Exactly. Or you would and that little boy ball. leaving the Astros game, his dad would have got busted in the head by a nine millimeter because old boy spun out on dope and got in a road rage with this guy's dad who's just leaving the Astros game with his kid. Correct, correct. And I mean, there's a countless crimes. There's like a lot, that. and you, you've been hearing about it lately a lot. You and, have been, and, and I kind of run into that at a at a lower level. So I have a Houston store, um, and the guy broke in, and uh, he broke in twice, and then I I was just driving around and I saw him based on what I saw in the video. Mm-hmm. So I called a. Uh, Houston, they, they arrest him like, hey, so what's going to happen? He's like, honestly, he'll probably be no. out by the morning. Mm-hmm. And I was like, really? He's like, yeah. Mm-hmm. Like I, thousands of dollars of business, damage to your correct, business. Correct, correct, yeah. So thousands broken windows, Nobody's shelves broken. Nobody's going to pay for it? No. No, no. So <laughs> um, I asked that. And then it was a second one. And I was like, I had <laughs> so we have insurance, dude. Yeah, so right. it's That's a debate, you. bro. It's it's yeah, Correct. You know because they don't they don't like my insurance because it's smoke shop and it's CBD. Then it's a lot different than regular business insurance. Mm-hmm. Rates go higher, up, correct? Yeah, rates go I mean, higher. Like, things go up. hundreds if not thousands of dollars for windows for your business. Correct. I mean, correct. Just so insane, once dude. I learned that, I was like, man, I, I need to get out of I, this store out of Houston because the, I mean, Houston PD told me straight up, like, bro, he, he'll be out in the morning. It was like two a.m. He's like, okay. once he sees the judge, he'll be out. I'm like, really? He's like, yeah, we, we, we know who he is. We run into him all the time. Mm-hmm. No, no. Wow. Now I see the... Correct. It's good to see that, you know what I'm saying? Because mm-hmm. some people have their political views, you know what I'm saying? And it's just good to hear both sides of everything, Correct. you know what I'm saying? Like, I need to hear that. I'm, I'm, right. I'm more conservative, you know what I'm saying? I have some different, maybe some liberal, more views on some certain things, but I tend to lean more towards that. But sometimes I need to hear the story of whatever. Right. You know what I'm saying? What's your Just, argument? Why why are you making this these decisions? Like why is what's the root of the argument? And then you get to the root, but there's sometimes there's nothing there. Yeah. Correct. Exactly. There's bro. money, money there. Yeah. You know, power or money, yeah. control. Yeah. And so it's just good to have, you know, adult conversations. I mean, I'm learning how to talk at 44 years old, man. You know what I'm saying? Like, whether it was through the dog business and my wife or, like, going to therapy, you know, your little guy yeah. next door popped yeah. in. Dude, I mean, I spent two Gs a month on therapy, correct, bro. Correct, And therapy, to you know me, is real good. Like, like, straight up. Mm-hmm. I mean, that's for me individually, my wife, you know, and her stuff, and then us as a couple. You know what I mean? It's like, I want to stay married, bro. Right. right. A lot of and people think, you know, I mean, there's a lot of stigma behind, uh, against therapy, but if you're want to go to that next level Mm -hmm. like if you want to go if you're already let's say at the top level high level 
but there's something that's blocking you, some trauma, something yeah. that's not allowing you to see past something negative or see past something negative about yourself. You know, that therapy will help you unlock your full so potential. Much. And a lot of times we don't even know yeah. it. A lot of times oh, we yeah. don't even know what's going on. You're like, oh, that's what that is, Man. you know. So that yeah, trauma's deep, bro. Yeah. No. Very, very, very you deep. know what I mean? Like, I grew up, you know, in a, a good family, only child, you know, middle class family, you know what I'm saying? But my parents, you know, did, I, mean, I got what I wanted, and I was a spoiled little kid, and my parents loved each other, and la 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 la. But, you know, I came out with some shit on the other end, you know <laughs> right, what I'm saying? Like, right. all of us do, just like my three kids, right. you know what I'm saying? great life whatever whatever you know they don't see mom and i you know going fisticuffs mm -hmm. in the house and it's a stable household and there's food on the table and all that stuff but they're gonna have their own trauma right, right. you'll never know <laughs> yeah. you'll never know until it's until <clears throat> they're going through it yeah you know? until you talk to him because a lot of times you know w w he comes in all the time so i don't know where he'll start conversations he's like hey ray you know i've noticed this and this and i'm like oh wow yeah like <laughs> I, you know and he's like he'll ask me certain questions and i'm like Man, you do this for fun. He's like, well, no, it's just, it, it's just in his nature to ask. Yeah. And then, and then, um, and then we became good friends. So he wants to help, quote unquote, and yeah. guide me through stuff like that. But for that, yeah, therapy is definitely a, a good thing. And I've told a lot of people about that. And I think a lot of times, too, as men or machos or whatever you want to call, it, you're like, what? I don't need to talk to nobody. I'm fine. Mm. You know, I, my feelings are good. I'm just gotta work and provide food. That's that's what I gotta do. But once you get in, in into that, like my my brother. I got into it and he's like, man, this is helping me on a whole other level. You mm -hmm. know, where I'm from, like, this is, you know, n not frowned upon, but it's just like, you don't do that. You're a man. Like, no. you just well, deal with it. Only for the crazy people, right? right. No. It's, yeah. It's but it's like crazy is not even, you can't even define what crazy is now. There's so many, you know, um, diagnoses that, what is it? What are you? You know, you depressed, anxious, you know, and then you have like the severe ones like schizophrenia and bipolar and yeah, that's a you whole know, different. personality disorder. Yeah. My wife's a uh, therapist. So yeah. Yeah. I hear a lot of in Harris County. So a lot of the stuff that you're talking about, she deals with like all the, you know, the, the drug addicts, the, you know, the people that, but they have mental issues. So it's like compounded. Yeah. Right. Correct, yeah, so correct. she has the to drugs deal with a lot of that. Dual yeah. diagnosis. Mm -hmm. yeah, mental, mental illness and drug addiction. Yeah. I definitely feel like I've, I've been like in this woken space for the last couple of years. And, uh, you know, it's just, you know, I, I guess yeah, the, the, the term nowadays is like the toxic masculinity. You know right. what I'm saying? Like what we thought was cool, you know, running hoes and like selling oh, drugs or hustling people or like whatever it may have been that was your deal. You know what I'm saying? Like getting one over on whatever. I mean, like it just, uh, you know, whatever your community or your ethnic background or whatever thought was like macho. Right, or I right, mean, like right. it's just... You know, and I've got boys, you know, I've got two boys and I've got a little girl too. Yeah. So it's like, you know, not only do I have to raise these boys up to be respectful, you know, human beings, but then I've got a daughter that, you know, hopefully she sees that model in our house right. and knows how to Correct. pick a boy for her husband, you know what I'm saying, one right. day, you know what I'm saying? I mean, like, we got a responsibility, you know, so. But they can't be weak either. I know. <laughs> <laughs> and that's the, that's the balance, right? Correct. How do you, that's how do you help them not be weak, but also help them be respectful um, martial arts probably you know, probably yeah. it's like, it's like jiu -jitsu kids, little self respect you know, and yeah. earn respect have them have, have them earn respect from others yeah. like, mm -hmm. that'll be good like, yeah. yeah go you can say all the words but go and go in there and see if you can you know act it out and yeah beat this guy at get on know, that mat mm -hmm. Yeah, jiu -jitsu. I mean, you do jiu -jitsu? I don't, man. Ooh. I'm too banged up, dude. I mean, I got bicep tendon tear, wrist, rotator cuff. That's, that's, those stress. are the requirements. I know. Those are the requirements. <laughs> you do jiu yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Where at? Uh, I go to Revis, Team Revis, uh, off of 105. That's where I might have known you from. My kids started at Revis. Oh, okay, with, okay. Um, uh, what, what was his name? The first name? Um, yeah, hopefully he's not watching. I know. <laughs> Oh, I just call him Coach. I'm so used to calling him Coach. But, He's uh, so cool, dude. Coach Revis. Yeah, yeah. yeah but so, Daniel, right? Daniel. There, there you go. Yeah. There you go. There you go. So, there. so uh, my kids started there, and now they're over here off uh, down here on the South Fraser by the uh, box. Carson. Gym. Yeah. Carson. Yeah. Good gym. Carson. Yeah. So they've been over there for a little while, and I watch, man. You know, I got a bunch of friends. My bu buddy Joe Morris just opened. He was at Crawl McGraw, North Houston. Uh -huh. He ran that for all those years, okay. and now he's got a spot up here in Conroe. He's like, okay. oh, okay, man. You I gotta get like, in I there, can man. See myself. It's like, right. uh, Same here. I have bad, I have terrible knees. I feel like somebody <sighs> just grabs my knee, tap yeah, out, yeah, tap. just go the wrong way. Right. Yeah. No, but but the the sport in general, and and I've been to different gyms and met a lot of people, and it's just the respect is so good, and you yeah. meet so many people and. People know, like, you know, 
and I, I, I would walk in there and be like, oh, look at this guy. He's smaller than me. I'm about to go, go. And then all of a sudden, I'm like, oh, man. But yeah, the yeah. respect is there, like, where as far as they know, you're, you're, not as, you're not at the level that they are. So they do mm -hmm. take it easy on you. And then, of course, as you start to grow, you start to learn more moves. But I, I absolutely love it. And yeah. I do it more for, like, the competition. So whenever there's, like, an event coming up to Houston, then I'll, try, I'll start going more to yeah. the gym just because that's – I do it as a hobby, but I just love to compete. Yeah, and and that that's my thing. But yeah, yeah, that's what I've seen you in that community. So I know, right? It's just it's yeah. crazy once you get into Conroe and you start to kind of it's it's kind of a right. small big town, right? You know right. Like, small yeah, and big at the same time. But yeah, but I, I would yeah. definitely recommend it. It's really yeah, cool. I'm gonna probably check Joe's spot out. He's a combat something. He just opened it, and I mean, yeah, because like the oh, handle, 13, 14? It might be okay. Yeah, yeah. getting into that weapons and handling knives and kind mm. of body weight stuff and. I don't know. And that'll be good for you too. I mean, yeah. I mean, you know, I feel like not that you need it, but it's just an extra sure. thing that you can extra use to be able to bring yeah. somebody down a lot, a lot, yeah. a lot better. So we were gonna talk, or we were gonna ask you, like, whenever you're going in there with um, to get somebody, mm -hmm. like, are you armed to the teeth, or or do you have, or do you have to have certain requirements? You can't take certain things, or. Uh, I do. Uh, I mean, I, I wear a full duty belt. Mm -hmm. With I carry I, a Glock. Yeah. I'm a Glock guy. I carry a, a fully customized Glock, 17, and then uh, I mean the Taser is the great equalizer, bro. Mm -hmm. The X26. Okay. Um, that's the one that shoots out. Right. So, uh, and I carry like a control stick, like a little baton that you can kind of hit pressure points with. You know, somebody's mm -hmm. not giving you their hands, you bury that sucker in between their shoulders. And yeah. Like, yeah. Uh, open up like like kind of get some trap, you know, just different stuff to take them down. I don't use that baton that much, uh, but like the the taser, I mean, that's that's probably I mean, right, you can be hopped up on dough. I don't care how big you are. Like I had to qualify with it. I mean, like, dude, oh, yeah, yeah. They, they have to hit that you with it. Life yeah, changing, yeah. bro. I'm talking about life changing, really, man. Really. Like I mean, like I, and I've qualified some of my guys. <clears throat> I'm not an instructor, but you know, we've been like they're like, oh well, yeah, we a couple <laughs> yeah. young guys. I'm like, all right, cool. So I hook them up, and you know, it's six seconds, bro. And it's I mean. It's a life changer. I mean, just to feel that 100,000 volts run through your body, dude, I mean, it's just completely paralyzing, man. Wow. And so you kind of, it's good to qualify with it or take a little ride right. because, like, you know, I mean, like, it's going to put you on the, on your face. Definitely. You know what I'm saying? Like, I mean, you and can be just, full just, sprint, like dolphin, just, like, just, your, your legs and your, and, like, you just instantly, and it's, and you hit right. that ground, you know what I'm saying? I mean, so hopefully they're in the grass, but, I mean, I'll take them how I got to get them, but. Right. But yeah, so but and also when you when you hit the ground, that six seconds is over. I mean, you can come up. Correct, correct. So, so it's good to qualify. It. So it's like you know you can't take them down. They're going they're going down from the taser. Cuff them up and you know like like you're like a cowboy like roping a cow. Yeah. <laughs> so it's like you freeze time in a way. I mean, you do. It was just interesting for me because uh, you know dog. I was on Dog the Bounty Hunter. Correct, I saw I, that. I did their uh, one of their seasons when it was uh, Dog and Beth on the Hunt with Country Music Channel and. Um, Leland, their son, qualified me, and and he actually shot me. When I when I do my guys normal, I have like a cartridge that's busted open. I like tape it to oh, them, okay. and like, uh, but just like he actually it. popped me because those things, those bar those deals go in it. your skin, yeah. like literally like a fish hook, and you got to. And I remember, you know, he was like, "Hey, you need to go to the bathroom or anything?" And I was kind of like, <laughs> I was like, "Yeah, I guess." He was like, "Take like, this or whatever." <laughs> He's like, "Whatever you need to do you need to get it out," and I was kind of like second guessing myself, but I was all like cycled up at the time. Got no, this. this ain't nothing. Yeah, yeah dude. And they yeah, kind of yeah. grabbed my arms. I'm like, what, dude? And I'm like, all right. And he's like, taser, taser, taser. Pow. And I remember I was like, I guess what I learned is you're supposed to be like, when they say taser, 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 you should be like, whoo, whoo, like blowing out. Mm -hmm. But I was just like, oh, you so when it, when we're in this convention center, you know, the little folding walls and these, you know, like huge, you know, 2,000 people deals. And I mean, when they hit me, I was like, I couldn't help it. I was just like, I was just screaming as loud as I could, involuntary, mm. and I couldn't even move. And it felt like I had like three like clear balls down my spine. And uh, have you, did you guys ever go to that Body of the Worlds exhibit where they had like the human bodies they dissected for science down in Houston? Mm -hmm. I seen it on the billboard. Yeah, they they had a a glass case with a like an outline of a body and like the nervous system, your nerve system. How do they how it all comes off your spine? Right. It's just like a netting, netting of nerves. It comes all from your spine, your fingertips, your everything, toes. Everything, everything, yeah. Everything comes back to your spine. Right. Well, it felt like I had these. I could visualize these like three balls down my my spine and just it was just like wow i mean my nerves i mean just 
you know, because that's where I got shot was in the back. In the back but I mean, like every single part of my body was you just felt lit it. alive. Wow. And so, um, so it was, it was, it was, I mean, so I know now when I come in, like yesterday we arrested this guy and it was like a travel trailer, like this little junky travel trailer. And they bit, built like a 10 by 10 plywood room off the front of it. You know, we were in East County. <laughs> East County. He's, a little, he's a little messed up. And uh, like we cut, like there was just like a little door that kind of came in. It was like, you know, maybe the side half of this table, like you kind of came in, it could go in the trailer, go in this room. And, you know, after we sweet talked the girl and let her know, his wife, like, hey, dude, like we know he's here. Like, unless you want to go to jail for harboring him, da 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 da. Here's the warrant. She's like, okay. And I was like, see so you send him out. And we kind of opened that door and he's like, you know, hands on his on his knees, all like you know, clenching his fists. I'm like, oh man, it's about to be on. You know what I'm saying? Like, and we've been warned about this guy. You know what I'm saying? Like evading arrest, assault. And I was like, man, dude, we're like in this little hallway, in this little ten by ten room. I'm like, dude, we're about to be full bore. Like, right. you know, and that's where you know, like body weight or you know, whatever. Oh, I was just kind of gonna cut him. I'm kind of off to the side. I mean, me and my partner are pretty big guys, and. Uh, it ended up going good. I just kind of, you know, talked to him. You know what I'm saying? I just treated him like a human. You yeah. know what I'm saying? I mean, I'm like, yeah. dude, I'm here. It's over. You got a warrant. I mean, like, right. I think you can try to hop him. Right. I mean, there was me and him and then two more guys outside. I was like, bro, like, you ain't in nowhere. You know what I'm right. saying? Like, if you get by me and him and these tasers, I mean, good luck out yeah, here. Right. It's like, if just we got room, it's going to get rowdy. Yeah. You know, so. yeah, I've seen on your channel how well you treat them whenever they're, you know, yeah. cooperating. They're just like, you know. I feel like you have you're to. Human, I mean, you, know, you're, you don't, though, yeah. dude. Because, like, I've run with guys that are, like, just dicks. I don't right. know if they got beat up in school or something like that or whatever, but, like, they're cuffing these guys and, like, opening Taking the door to the face. It's like, and, like, talking shit and roughing them up in cuffs. I'm like, I mean, like, when I got you, it's just like, it's yeah. like I won. It's, it's, there's no real e ego or pride. I mean, I've arrested hundreds of people. Right. You know what I'm saying? So I'm like, cool, it's over, bro. Like, I've been looking yeah, for you for eight months. Your count is like or, 500 or something like it's, that? It's, it's, it's way up there. We used to always joke about this guy I used to run with. He'd be like, I got 500 felony arrests. And I'm always, always like, I mean, I, I didn't count. I don't right. count, but I know it's hundreds. You know what I'm saying? Right. And I mean, even at the in the beginning, I just was never that guy. I was like, <clears throat> right. you know, on the ground. Yeah, I was true. just like, yeah. I was like, dude, like, I, I mean, like, I, I could have looked for this guy for one day or for one year, and it's instantly just like, Shh. that's why I was like, mm -hmm. at the end of my deal, I'm like, all right, yeah. it's a wrap, you know what I'm saying? Because yeah. it's just like, it's done, and I'm like, if you're cool, like, we're gonna get some smokes. I'm gonna bring you around to the front and cuff you as long as everything's safe here at the house, mm -hmm. and we're gonna get you a little Dr Pepper. Kiss the wife. We'll cover the cuffs up in front of the kids. You know what I'm saying? Because I mean, like, I've, I've been through all that through my own addiction. Correct. You know what I'm Correct. saying? Like, you know, what I did to my, you know, I didn't have kids at the time, thank God. But, like, you know, to my parents and anybody that, like, kind of surrounded me, I was like a tornado. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? It's so, like I try to protect these people a little bit from, you know, give them a little bit of dignity. Did you ever get bounty hunt hunted? I didn't. I was on bond once. Uh, down at Cameron County because I thought it'd be good to go run a bunch of steroids and uh, pills across the border, the United oh, States border, and nice. I got caught down nice. there. It seemed, it was, at the time, I was like, hey, this is genius. Perfect, easy money. We'll do a little blow and drive down there right, and right, like right. get it and come back, and it just Quick. didn't work out. No. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It could have really changed the projection of my whole life. Right. It, it did in a positive way, but luckily... The feds didn't pick up the case, mm -hmm. and they dropped it to state charges and brought it back to the United States. And they dropped it from a felony to a misdemeanor possession. And I was like, great. And I was in like the peak of my addiction. So I was like, I left out of there on like mail and probation for six months. And I was like, got the cat by the tail. And within months, I was in trouble in Harris County. You know what I'm saying? Because I was super deep in the, the drug and right. alcohol world. And then, you know, that case I caught in Harris County ended up revoking the probation down there. And it was just this big, you know, which ended up pushing me into recovery. You know what I'm That's saying? Good. Which was a you know godsend you know it's mm -hmm. been you know, I've been sober for a long time and so and I've been in that world for you know, half my life so uh, which helps me just do everything I do within the bail. Right. So one, one. once you um, once you recovered, uh, then you, when when did you say okay I'm going into this uh, to this industry? Bail. Mm -hmm. um, I wanted to be a chef growing up. That was my well I say that. I was always in sales, you know, and uh, some good and some bad, you know what I'm saying? But, like, as a kid, like, I was always I was always selling. Uh, as a little kid, we lived on a golf course, and I would go out in the pond there in the golf course, and I'd get golf balls out of there. Just, like, at six, seven years old, and I would, like, mm -hmm. go home and shine them up and have my, my red, my little, what was that, the little red wagon, 
uh, that we all of our yeah, kids yeah, have. Yeah, I can yeah. forget the name of it all of a sudden with the little wood sides. Correct, correct. And the whole thing was full of golf balls. I'd roll down in the main drag in our neighborhood and have my little chair on the curb. And the old men be coming to play golf on Saturday and Sunday. I'd be out there selling golf balls, you know, mm-hmm. a quarter a piece, you know, or five mm-hmm. for a dollar, just like hustling. Mm-hmm. And it just kind of, I've always had that little hustle in me. But um, when I lived up in Colorado after high school, I uh, got into the chefing industry, and that was kind of like my passion. I was like, oh, dude, I'm going to culinary school. I love doing these banquets and these cheese trays and fruit trays and kind of doing this stuff for big groups of people. And uh, I kind of shifted my addiction when I was like after high school because I went full bore in high school. Oh. I was just all the way through the spectrum of the drug world. And so I went to Colorado. It became natural. It was like cannabis and right. mushrooms and drinking <laughs> porterhouse beers right. and stout beers. I thought it was all... But when I came back to Houston, like that synthetic world picked back up and mm-hmm. I took back off. And so I was in culinary school when I came back from Colorado. Drugs just took off in my life and uh, I, I stopped going to culinary school. You know, I had like a, some bullshit reason my car got broken right. into and they took my stuff. And I was like, oh, I'm not going to do that no more, but it was really drugs. But fast forward kind of through that, and that's kind of how my dad was in the bail bond industry. He always said that he started the bail bond company because I was always in trouble. <laughs> He's like, I got a hookup. He's like, yeah. yeah, I think I should probably get into this. I spent a lot of money on these bonds. I see I? your future, son. <laughs> <laughs> and so, uh, so he was uh, doing bail, and um, yeah, I kind of segued into that. So mm-hmm. that was kind of my deal. I was like, oh, that's what I want to do. My, you know, my, my, old, my, my old man was an entrepreneur, so he was always had like some businesses. He was doing yeah. yeah. up. And he sees the the potential. And I think so. Yeah. I mean, I think of his generation. He did. You know what I'm saying? Like, I mean, I think with us and stuff. I mean, it's just like 10x. You right. Know what I'm saying? I mean, like, I mean, my old man did well, and like, you know, he was a, a blue collar. You know, worked in car dealerships, and my mom was a teacher. And they really took care of me, and I had a good life. And then around high school, my dad started getting into business for himself. We started out doing car customizing here in Conroe. Oh. Little car alarm shop and window tent shop, like before Nicho's and before. Where at? Uh, right here on Fraser, across from the subway, it was Auto Extras oh, okay. and okay. Auto Excess from '89 to '99. And, uh, you know, like John out there, CC Plus, this was before all these guys, mm, Cutting right, Edge right. Customs out there on the lake, mm, Rob. Right. I mean, all these people worked for my dad. He was the first car customizer wow, shop in Montgomery nice. County. And so, like, that was kind of the beginning of his entrepreneurial walk, and then he kind of went into the bail. And so I always got to kind of see that, and uh, that's just where I think a lot of mine came from and just with my spin on it. Mm-hmm. Does so. he do anything, uh, any cus- cars? No, <laughs> we so went from 89 to 99, mm-hmm. we did cars. And in 95, we started bail. So in the front of that, that building we had there, it's Daniel's Paint and Body now. Yeah. It's right across from Subway, okay. across from that used car lot, right, right, th- right, right there. Right. On, um, and there's a boost. Mobile. Yeah, boost yeah, is right out there. of it. Yeah. So well, that boost is where our bail bond company used to be out of that little oh, kiosk. Yeah, okay, and then we had the okay. car customizing shop and the window right tent bay and all that stuff. And so, you know, 89 to 99, 95, they started bail on the front of there. Bail kind of took off. And so, 99, my dad bought that office on the corner of 105 and Frazier, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. across from Caddy Corner from Walgreens. Yep. Yep. Mm-hmm. Old skinny little narrow building there that sits there. And um, it's across from a body shop now. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah. And so, yeah, so when he went down there, he was like, hey, I got this car customizing shop I started. You know, this was like you know, our little passion. I had a bunch of custom cars growing up and stuff. And, um, he was like, you know, you want to take that over? And I was just so deep in my addiction. I was like, oh, no, I want to do bail. And I was just like, you know, I really just want to get high, you know what I'm saying, and, like, chase girls mm-hmm. and do all that stuff. And, and so he ended up selling that but owned, kept the building, you mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? So he sold his business and all the inventory and all that stuff. And we ended up, I ended up stumbling into bail a couple of years later, probably more around, like, 01, 03. So I still had some more. More running my life in the right, gutter, right, you know right. what I'm saying? Unfortunately, man, like, I mean, I'm real hard headed, mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying? Are. And it can be like, it can be t- for a good cause, or, or it can be, you know, like whatever path happened to be on. And, and you know, I wish I could say that's always right. been. Um, it's like the story of the prodigal son, you know? Whenever very much so. Like the, he, he realized that he was in trouble whenever he saw himself wanting to eat the pig's food, mm. digging in the digging in the mud, right? And he's like, what am I doing here, you know? Mm. And he ran back to his father. His father was, you know, waiting for him with a robe and a ring. And then off he went. 
that's uh, been my story, bro. You, you know go. what I'm saying? Even up until currently, you know, because like I was telling you, I mean, even through like the addiction world, you know what I'm saying? Like I've been, you know, like I've, I've come and gone and I've made correct, different correct, choices correct. and thought this was a better avenue and, you know, I've had to make my way back to a number of situations right, in my life, right. man, you know, and, and luckily I've always connected myself with, you know, well-rounded men that have always welcomed me back, you know what I'm saying? That's good. From my dad to, you know, people I hung out with, you know, friend-wise, you know. Right, right, right. And is it, do you feel like today is still kind of like day by day um, with that concept of like you're still trying to conquer that day? Because at any point, from, from what I've heard, at any point you can kind of go back into that realm yeah i mean the the book i'm reading right now uh, about eckert eckert tolle is the power of power now. Of now yeah uh, that's a good book and i mean i can't think of any better philosophy than one day at a time you know right. what i'm saying even right. though those are two different schools of thought or books you know what i'm right. saying like yeah. the 12 step deals one day at a time eckert tolle is about now and the power of now and i mean like there's really no other area you've got any control of mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. yeah you know what I'm saying? I mean, yeah, just that, if we want to keep it real, correct, like, I correct. mean, we can be thinking about what we screwed up on yesterday or last year. We can plan today for tomorrow. Correct. You know what I'm saying? But we can't live in tomorrow. Correct. That or is in correct. a year or when future. cannabis comes mm-hmm. to Texas. Right. I mean, correct, like, it's correct. cool to kind of plan because, you know, hey, we're mm-hmm. going to take the CBD and boom, boom, and we're right That's in business. Right, you know what I'm saying? Right, I get right. it. Yeah. But, like, this is it. Correct. Like, we're talking to these microphones right now doing this podcast live, you know what I'm saying? Like, this is really it, and I, that's where I've been trying to perfect my game is in the present, you know what I'm yeah. saying? And, I, and, and it's just, I mean, and even, I mean, just, it's just very broad, and this book is um, really just helping me out about trying to be a better person and be present, you know what I'm saying? Because, like, I just I tend to, like, I don't know if it's just the human mind or it's my mind, but, I mean, I can be, like, I'm never here. Right. You know what I'm saying? Right. I'm just not, dude. Right. I'm, like, beating myself up about stuff I did 20 years ago right. today. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. I'm and just always, like, yeah. and then, yeah, I mean, like, I'm just, like, the subconscious mind's a trip, bro. Yeah, like, I mean, yeah. does the Dr. Joe Dispenza work? I mean, there's just tons of stuff, man, that I've been dipping my toe into, you know what I'm saying, yeah. and reading about, you know, because I'm doing that 75 hard right mm-hmm. now. I saw Andy that. Frisella. I saw that. So I'm on... I'm on day 25. Are you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like you started it and you ain't you have had no yeah, mess I have ups. It. I have. It. I think I've had two with my, with my second workouts on Sundays. It's the hardest. Yeah. The sec. I usually still go in the morning get something done. Yeah. But the second workout's usually been the the the, yeah. the hardest one. But so yeah. I know you you mentioned it to me. So 75 days, you have to. You it's more than just working out, right? Sure. It's food, Correct. diet. Yeah, so it's a 45-minute indoor workout, a 45-minute outdoor workout. It's a gallon of water. It's 10 pages out of a nonfiction book. Mm-hmm. It's a progress picture. No alcohol, no cheat meals, no cheat meal. and follow some type of healthy eating. Correct. No cheat meals. Did I say progress picture? Yes, progress picture. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's yeah. been the thing that's messed me up because, oh, yeah. like, I'll go get both my workouts done. I'll knock the gallon down. I'll get my reading done. And I have the app. I hope you have Correct. the app. Yep, yep, yep. And, like, I'll just, like, you know, be on, like, 20, day 21, and, like, I'll wake up in the morning, like, oh, my God, like, I forgot to take the picture. Like, I've done it, like, three or four times, yeah. dude. Like, my, my camera guy, he just finished it. Like, we started together. Mm-hmm. He finished 75 days. Boom. No kids, you know, not married. Right, right. You know, got one of those guys goes to bed at 3 in the morning or 9 mm-hmm. p.m. or whatever, but he's just, like, you know, doing his own deal. Because if you miss dog. one, it'll you tell start you. over. It'll right. tell you. Yeah. yeah. And it'll take you right back to that yeah. one. So, like, I'm on, like, day 34 now. Mm-hmm. And, like, I, this is the last time I'm doing it, bro. Like, I mean, it's so heady. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Like, it's not like, oh, like the diet. No, I mean, like, it's just, like, it's just a full, you know, spectrum of mind and body right. and spirit. Right. And, like, you know, it's not like it's, like, some diet. Like, I'm doing keto or something. Like, right. it's, like, I mean, right. like, dude, like, I don't do two a days. I mean, my body's responded well to it. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. That's been the cool thing about that. Right. You know what I'm saying? It's like realizing, oh, if I work out in the morning and I go for a walk or a bike ride in the evening, all of a sudden I got some abs. There you go. You know what I'm saying? There Which for me, I've never had. I've always been a big kid. And so... Uh, I, can have, I can have abs. I can just stay yeah. on it. You just got to stay on and it. And I mean, cheap, really... Man. Yeah, I mean, like, I'm really not doing a diet on this deal. I, I've been eating healthy for 20-something years, correct, you know correct. what I'm saying? So I'm eating healthy. I'm, like, not doing sugar or any fast food, but I'm not, like, on, like, keto right, or right, right. my same same, foods same. meals or something. I'm just, like, keeping it. You same, know. same. Keeping yeah. it as close as possible. And no alcohol, I think, was another one. No, too. Alcohol, no alcohol, which is good for me. Correct, I, I, correct, I, yeah, correct. I haven't I drank since August 25th of 04. Oh, nice. Congrats. Yeah. Wow. 
So, um, but, but that's a big deal. You know what I'm saying? I mean, most people like to have a beer. Right. I could only imagine if I was like an active, I mean, normal drinker. I don't know what that is, but right. you know, some people, normal drinker likes to have a little, you know, whiskey one right, night, maybe right. on the weekend with the wife correct, or a correct. beer after work or something. And like, it's like, phew. cut it. Yeah. And you got to realize that's, that reading. reveals a lot of stuff. Yes. Right. It's helped me a lot for my reading. As yeah. it? Cause I have like a lot of books. And I'm like, I'm going to read them one day and uh, this I is love it. Me. Yeah, it's good. I love it. Ten pages a day, so it's like you're. I mean, so I'm reading seventy pages a, a, a week. You know what I'm saying? Out of a book, I'm walking fifteen miles. When do you get your reading in? In the morning or in the morning. evening? Morning. That's why I was, when you were like, "Hey, you gotta be here at seven. I was like, "Damn, bro, I'm, like, I'm, I'm missing my workout, but I'm missing my reading, bro. Right. I'm like, what the fuck?" <laughs> <laughs> right, yeah. So yeah, I was like, "I actually do my reading in in the evening." Do you? Yeah, like, like calms right you. Bed, yeah, yeah. Gets me away from the devices. Yeah, you know, get them yeah, away. Yeah. Start reading. You know, ten pages in, twenty whatever. Yeah. Close it. And mm-hmm. it's, it's too hard for me. I get up yeah. too early, and by nighttime, if like, I start reading, I start like I have to do it here or somewhere where there's light, or I gotta like my day is where my day is starting. Because if not, I just start yawning, especially because yeah. it's hard for me to read anyway. So yeah, yeah no, so I, it's I'm not used bro. to it. Yeah. I get up and running out the door, and I, I like I can't just sit and enjoy coffee and. Or do something at home. Like, yeah. no, I have to, I have to leave. You have to be yeah. moving. Yeah. You're one of those guys that sees your feet in the ground, your head's just like, mm, Yeah, I can. Yeah, no. <laughs> Why don't you get up early? How early do you get up on average? So, I'm doing 6 a.m. right now. So, I want to get back to 5. There like, 5 is my time. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's like super quiet in the house. And, mm-hmm. you know, try to get out, get some reading done, prayer, meditation, get out on the earth and kind of ground a little bit. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's right, like right. my preference. Yeah. Earthing, yeah. earthing's, earthing's the thing that's, that's we talked about that. Yeah, yeah, that we've yeah. been yeah. talking about. For sure, bro. I'm using your feet. It, yeah. Also, my friend has been uh, getting into like using your feet the right way. Like your toes shouldn't be like, you know, they need well, to like spread out. Mm-hmm. Yeah, spread out as 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 you should, right? Yeah. Your your toes shouldn't be this way. Running shoes shouldn't be mm. like that. Mm-hmm. Like there's some shoes that. That you're able toes. To, yeah, that you're able to push off of your toes. You're supposed to use your toes. Too. Dude, I've got that plantar fasciitis in the bottom of my feet, and uh, it's bad. Like, well, this that's walking he, irritates yeah, the hell out of me. Yeah. He's working on it. Yeah, that's what he's doing. It just like, feels like your tendon's tearing off every time you walk. Yeah, dude. So I'm going to get some amnio injections in there, some stem cells shot in the bottom of my feet. Yeah, yeah, yeah like, he's, he's trying that. That's pretty good. Yeah, I, I, I get up by 4.45, try to make you? it to the gym by 5. Oh, yeah. 5 to 6 is my gym time. Nice. And that's... Um, Just pop off? Yep. That's my yeah. gym time. And I, I like it better because my day gets started earlier. And then, you know, 4 or 5 o'clock, I start to kind of start ending my day, head home and do other things. Yeah. I mean, not always, of course, you know, with the business, you just, oh, just yeah. never know what's going to... What's gonna, pop off um or go from there but so what what else is in what's next for you i mean i know you're working on this uh your daddy you're trying to grow it your bond daddy your bond daddy <laughs> not your <laughs> my wife calls me daddy <laughs> right uh <laughs> she's watching this going yeah right <laughs> <laughs> right he's like so what, what's wish. what's next i mean discovery channel is what's next that's what's on my horizon nice which is tough having two camps, you know what I'm saying? Like having my my social media marketing team that mm-hmm. we developed your bond daddy and then have a discovery ID knock at my door. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. These guys are like, bro, I mean, like, what we about organically us? grow this. I mean, look, we almost got 200,000 followers on TikTok, and we're about to hit 10 on YouTube, and we can do what I want, and yada, yada, yada. And then, like, I'm thinking, like, you know, because I'm 44, you know what I'm saying? Like, oh. I'm kind of come from, like, that TV world, you know what I'm saying? Like, watching TV. Right, right. Like, TV. Like, oh, my gosh. Yeah, like, I've always true. had that, like, right. I'm a Leo, bro, so I'm like, dude, I like to get in front of the camera right, and, like, right. be seen, you know what I'm saying? And... So I'm like, dude, it'd be cool to be like famous, you know, because I'll get spotted now yeah. just from my mm-hmm. social media stuff. Definitely. Like this weekend, I was smoking a cigar down in the woodlands. This guy's like, hey, do I know you? And I'm like, no, man, I don't know. He's like, I was like, I do some social media stuff. He's like, oh, yeah, you're Bond Daddy. He's like, doing pictures and shit. I'm yeah. like, oh, yeah. yeah, like, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Anybody else? Yeah, I'm like, yeah, dude. Like, you know, but yeah, right. so it was like, so then we got the Discovery ID deal. And uh, I, I'm thinking I'm going to sit down with them fools. And, and I mean, I know they got a full. Uh, you know, legal team and all that stuff, but I mean, it's 2022. Like, I'm gonna go in there, guns blazing, and be like, "Here's the deal." Because I mean, I've, I've already got money. You know what I'm right. saying? Like, I'm right. I'm pretty, you know, you well off in, there in that area. You know what I'm saying? It's like I'm not looking like like, oh my god, I'm gonna be rich. Right. Like, sign right, this right. deal. Like, I'm gonna go in and be like, you know, this this is what I'm thinking. Like, cool, we're gonna do Discovery ID. You know, because it takes like they film a, a a series in like 90 days. 
It's like they'll come out here for like 90 days, 60 days. We'll just be like, and we'll film, you know, 12 or 16 episodes. Mm-hmm. They'll go edit all that stuff. I'll go back to my life. Right. So I'm thinking I'd like to be able to do your bond daddy since that is marketing for my bail bond company. Right. It's you know still what is. I'm, I mean, it is. I'm bounty hunting, but it's like, I think it'd be best for both of our worlds if they could, if I could give fans 12 Correct. months of TV. You know what I'm saying? You can go to my YouTube. We can do this for nine months. As soon as these episodes air, then I'll shut this down, which will push everybody over here to their Hulu and they're getting Discovery ID on their phones or whatever if they right. want to keep following us because they're going to be on YouTube unless they want to watch old episodes. But right. they want new content, come over to Discovery, boom, that season hits. When it shuts off air, then kick up the YouTube again. So it just keeps, I mean, they may tell me to go fuck off, oh, but like, I'm, gonna, I'm, gonna, I mean, I'm an entrepreneur, bro. Right, I'm right. Like, you have to. For you have one, to I got money. Negotiate. Two, I'm a business owner. Like, dude, right. like, I don't need you. Right, right. That's the best be way to, famous, that's you know, the man? best uh, place to be. Yeah. Um, with leverage. You have, yeah. leverage. you have to have a lot of leverage. I'm just saying, I think it's genius. It is. I mean, really why is. wouldn't they want that? I Correct. mean, so they're just like year round, people are getting Texas bounty or whatever the fuck they want to do. Mm-hmm. And then you're a bond daddy, and we're just like, can I shut this off? And then this comes on, and this goes off, and this goes back, and people are just like, oh my God. So they want to, you don't know if they want to uh, um, go with. Texas, Texas bond or yeah. So it's man, it gets real tricky. It's probably another episode, but I'd done some film stuff right before pre COVID mm-hmm. and George Floyd. Like I came up oh. and raised a bunch of capital to do a TV show yeah. with some guys and I oh, cool. brought in like thirty, forty thousand dollars, and we shot in these different cities and then COVID hit and crippled it. And then George Floyd hit and they mm-hmm. took everything cop off TV. Right. And so this got held in a held a holding pattern, but then I had this, you know, I opened up my new business and sold all to my business partners within this time, and I branded your bond daddy. So I've got like contractually, I've got some shit going on here. Right. right. Between, you know what I'm saying? Like just like it's like, you know, because when I signed this contract over here, I was like, oh, this is great, and I read it and whatever, whatever. Well, it really held me tight. So when I pivoted over this way with your bond daddy, I'm not 100 percent of this. I've got like partners, right. even though I fully funded this whole deal. So next level is going into Discovery Channel. I break free from all these contracts this direction, and this is just me and Discovery Channel, and it's what they want to do. So they're they're currently going to come up with some ideas and come to me and be like, hey, we're thinking, you know, whatever. This is how we you know what I'm saying? Right. You know, you can hunt in a pink dress or, you know. It's, right. yeah, you never know if they're going to come up with these <laughs> right. jobs. But, like, you know, they're going to come up with a couple ideas. I'm going to talk with my family and my partner, you know, and kind of just see what – what see, resonates. If you, see if you could bring some of your crew or, or I stuff hope like so. Yeah, I you know wouldn't I mean? want them to be like, we've got three actors that are going to come with you and be your bounty hunters. I'm like, I, I, see, I just don't have to do Correct. that. Yeah. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So That's the great like, thing. Right. Like, it would be like, cool, dude, I appreciate y'all. I have a six-month deal with this this right. Engel Entertainment. My, the people are shopping me. You're like Bruce you know, Willis like, in Armageddon. Yeah. And it's like, you want me to save the world? Yeah, I gotta get my crew. Yeah, right. yeah. Right. I'm not. I'm not going to do a TV no. show without my crew. Because right. like, I, I mean, like, I, I'm not who I am without these guys. Correct. You know what I'm saying? Right. Like, I'm not a solo. And the trust runner. and the everything's already Dude, built. I mean, like, I know if I go to the door yeah. and it starts banging, like, we're all going. You know right. what I'm saying? Like, it's like we're all going in. You know what I'm right. saying? Like, I'm not gonna look back and like I'm in there by myself. You know what I'm right. saying? Like, truly. You know what I'm saying? Like, correct. we train. Like, I'll be in California in September training, clearing houses with live, you know, ammunition awesome. for two days oh, and like. Man. I mean, got I another do little, it up. Another little idea here now. <laughs> yeah. So that's a little bit into my life, guys. That's, that's, that's awesome. what I do, man. That's awesome. Yeah, man. Awesome, awesome. Very good, very good. All right, guys. Well, thank you, guys, everybody that uh, is watching. We really appreciate all the support, all the shares. Once again, what is your Instagram? Uh, I'm Elliot Sondag. Uh, it's my Instagram. My Your Bond Daddy is all my social for my, for my bounty hunt. And that's TikTok, YouTube, Instagram, and all of the above. That's all the handles, yep. All of the yeah. above. Yeah. YouTube, awesome. that's, uh, we do want subscribers. They've got great content, great TV over there. So gotcha, gotcha. Check us out. And we'll put some of those links here in the comments so everybody can um, get those links. So thanks again for coming by, sharing that. So um, we have still so much more to cover, but sure. we're out of time. But we really appreciate you. Um, coming in, um, giving up some of your reading time or sure. your gym time. <laughs> your time know, in general, right. which yeah, is very, very valuable. Thank right? you, bro. Yeah. It is. Thank you. I appreciate you recognizing that. Yeah, it is. Yeah. Thank you so much. Yeah. All right, guys. Peace.